Hey friends, Ash here with 10 Cents, and this is my top 10 designer winter list for 2019 uh, again. So, in the last video, the last time I did this rather, I said I was going to try to make it quick, and then the video was 22 minutes long after editing. So it wasn't quick at all. <laughs> it was basically as long as your typical 30 minute TV show when you factor in commercials and stuff. So I'm doing it again, this time actually sticking to what I said and making this quicker. So this is gonna be a shorter version. I apologize about that super long version for everybody out there with lower attention spans. So let's jump into this and run through these top 10 fragrances. Obviously, there's going to be less information in this video if you want the full effect or whatever. You can watch the full length 22 minute video. I did the same thing last year. Apparently, these winter top 10s, I just talk and talk and talk. Winter fragrances are more up my alley. It's what I like a little bit more than the summertime freshies. It's just these richer fragrances are a little more interesting to me. So let's jump into this. Number 10, Salvatore Ferragamo Womo Signature. This fragrance is my favorite in the entire Salvatore Ferragamo Womo line. This has tonka, leather, coffee, and cinnamon as some of the main notes. This one is a little bit darker, a little bit richer than the original Womo. It's not quite as sweet, though it does have a good amount of sweetness to it. It has above average longevity, above average projection, which is something that you'll see in a lot of these fragrances. And this is one that my wife really, really enjoys. You can pick that up for right around 35 bucks, sometimes less, for a 100 milliliter size bottle from Discounters. Solid fragrance, especially if you like coffee and a little bit of darkness and sweetness in your wintertime fragrances. That's gonna take us to number nine, a fragrance from Victor and Rolf. It is Spice Bomb Extreme, one of the best known designer fragrances for this time of year when it's really cold outside. The original Spice Bomb was a huge hit and this one is as well. This one is a little bit sweeter than the original Spice Bomb. It's got vanilla in here, which is one of the most prominent notes along with tobacco and cinnamon. That one to me is an improvement on the original. Sometimes you'll have flankers that are worse than the original or they take the original and change things a little bit and it comes out as a lower quality fragrance overall. This one takes the original, changes things around a little bit and actually improves proves it. Obviously with the name Spice Bomb, you know there's a lot of spice in there, and there is. It is not quite as in your face as the original Spice Bomb, spice-wise, but it's done very well. It melds together with the vanilla and that sweetness exceptionally well. That one though, much more expensive than the Salvatore Ferragamo, Spice Bomb Extreme, even at discounters, quite expensive. That's gonna take us to number eight. This one is by Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is a fragrance that came out in 2016. I actually reviewed it back then on my channel. And uh, it's one that I haven't really talked about very much since then. It's this one, Le Mal Essence de Parfum. This fragrance is one that I actually kind of stumbled back upon. I was looking through my fragrances. Uh, I saw it there and I was like, yeah, it's been a while since I've worn that. Let me go ahead and give it a wear. And when I did, I was like, wow. That's actually really nice. I'd like to wear that a lot more this winter, and that's why it makes the list. It has bergamot, leather, lavender, cardamom, and vanilla as some of the notes. The one that sticks out the most in my mind when I think about this fragrance is the leather note. And other than that leather, there's the vanilla, which is a, a note that I love. I've talked about that a lot. Cardamom and lavender. It shares lavender with uh, most of the other fragrances in the Le Mal line, though this one is a little more mature than some of the Lamal fragrances out there, especially the more modern ones, you know, like Ultramal or uh, In the Navy. Those ones are a little sweeter, a little more youthful. This one, uh, not quite as much. You might say it's a little bit more grown up, though it is a fragrance still that younger people could wear. Where leather is one of the main notes that is gonna make it a little bit of a love or hate to some people out there. Leather can be a bit of a divisive note, but I think overall, it's an easy fragrance to pull off. It smells quite nice and is at number eight on my list. It's gonna take us to number seven, which is a fragrance that I've talked about a lot on this channel lately. A uh, fragrance I've talked about a lot in general. Prada Loam Intense. Iris, Leather, Tonka, and Amber are some of the main notes in this fragrance. It has that Prada Loam DNA with the iris in here that comes across as more of a fresh or soapy iris. It's not one that really comes across super makeup-y or lipsticky, which you'll find with some other 
iris fragrances out there, including one later on in this list. This one is a little more, I guess, masculine, you could say, because it has that leather note in here. Leather being a very prominent note in cold weather fragrances. That one has very solid performance. It smells of very high quality. It's very versatile. It's compliment getting. There is a whole lot to like about this fragrance. It's one that, in my opinion, you can wear daytime, nighttime, casual, formal, office, date, whatever. It has a ton of uses. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that this is one that my wife really loves as well. And honestly, she likes pretty much all of these. So there's number seven, Prada Loam Intense. It's gonna take us to number six. This is a fragrance that I reviewed maybe a couple of years ago. It's one that seems to get forgotten a little bit. It's a flanker in the Bulgari Man line. Bulgari Man Black Orient. Leather, oud, rum, cardamom, and floral notes are the notes in this fragrance. There are similarities between this and Bulgari Man in Black, which you would expect because this is basically a flanker off of Man in Black. And Bulgari Man in Black is a fragrance that gets compared to Spice Bomb, and we've already had a Spice Bomb on this list. But I do think this fragrance does things differently enough that it warrants inclusion here. It's a dark, sweet, spicy fragrance. The leather and the oud here are not overwhelming. They're not funky, they're not animalic. So it makes it a very versatile fragrance, at least as long as it's cold outside. Performance on that one, above average again, like pretty much all of the ones on here. And the price on that one is very low. It's in the $35 range from discounters. It's a great quality fragrance that will not break the bank. Bulgari Man Black Orient. Now we're at number five. It's a Paco Rabanne fragrance, one that's one of my cold weather staples. I like the sweetness in it. I like the way the tobacco comes across the cinnamon. Uh, it's just really well done. Paco Rabanne, one million privé. It has cinnamon, tonka, tobacco, myrrh, and blood orange as some of the notes in the fragrance. Initially, it's syrupy sweet. The orange and the cinnamon in the top combine to just give it a big blast of sweetness right off the top. As it dries down, you've got the tobacco, the myrrh, so a little bit of a, a resinous feel in there, and then patchouli as well. So it doesn't stay extremely sweet the entire way through, but there is a good amount of sweetness all the way through the dry down. As I said, this is one of my cool weather, cold weather staples. I love the way it smells. It's a big compliment getting fragrance as well. And this is one that I think, even if you hate the original One Million, you should check this fragrance out because it does things different enough that even if you hate One Million, you may smell that one, One Million Privé, and think, wow, that is actually surprisingly good because that's how it occurred to me the first time I smelled that one. It's gonna take us to number for a Roberto Cavalli fragrance, one that I have reviewed, and another fragrance that actually was a huge surprise with how much I liked it. Cavalli Uomo La Note. Leather, tonka, bergamot, cardamom, and pepper are some of the notes in this fragrance. So this one has some similarities to Carolina Herrera Privé, CH Privé. And it also has some similarities to Roberto Cavalli Uomo, which you would expect because this is a flanker of Roberto Cavalli Uomo. Essentially, the similarities between this and Privé are most evident with the leather note, the way it comes across. The leather in here is very sweet, so it's gonna be that type of leather note that's easily accessible, that people really like, that pulls compliments, that gets you attention. That's the kind of leather note in here. Sometimes leather notes can come across like a dirty leather or like a slick black leather, like a, like a jacket, like a motorcycle jacket. But the leather here is sweetened up with the, the cardamom, along with that tonka that kind of sits underneath everything. And that makes it, like I said, much more accessible, much easier to wear. So this is a fragrance that you could pull off especially well if you're going out on the town to a club or a bar, something like that, or going out on a date. Situations like that, maybe where you would have used La Nuit de Lome, something like that in the past, this will work really well in those type of situations. Now I'm not saying this smells like La Nuit de Lome, like this is not that fragrance, but would you use it at the same times? Yeah, I think so. One thing I will tell you guys though, is that this one, La Note, right now, it's a little bit hard to find. I haven't seen it at Discounters, uh, Fragrance X, Fragrance Net, those are the two I use the most often. It's not there right now. Now, could it pop up next week, uh, next month? Sure, absolutely it could. But right this moment, that one is probably the hardest one to find on this list. So if you're interested in this one, 
keep your eyes open for it. When it pops up for sale, it should be pretty affordable. All the other fragrances in this line are, so you should be able to pick it up in the $30 to $35 range. We are now in the top three. Number three, Dior Homme Intense. Iris and Brett, lavender and pear are some of the main notes in this fragrance along with the woody base of cedar and vetiver. This one doesn't need too much of an introduction. Dior Homme Intense has been getting love in the fragrance community for a long, long time now. And with this fragrance, essentially what happened, and I described this in the other video, is I wore this on a fragrance rotation video for a weekly fragrance rotation. And I just fell in love with the fragrance again. I smelled it and it was like smelling it for the first time all over again. I was like, my God, that smells so good. Admittedly, the iris in here is a little lipsticky, a little makeup-y. So if that's not your style, if you don't like fragrances that come across with an iris note that's very prominent that comes across that way, then this is probably not going to be for you. Me personally though, that does not bother me at all. And I absolutely love the way this fragrance smells. It's essentially a modern masterpiece as far as formal designer fragrances go. In my opinion, it is top tier. One of the absolute best that you could choose. The performance is fantastic. The atomizer is fantastic. The presentation, fantastic. It just screams class and refinement. It's a great release. And it's at number three for this year. I can't wait to wear more of this. It's weird that I'm so pumped to wear this considering how many times I have worn it, but it is what it is. Number two is a fragrance that I really, really enjoy. I loved it the first time that I smelled it, which I showed you guys here on a first impression. Isimiyaki Nuidisi Pulse of the Night. Incense, Tonka, Amber, Vanilla. Some of the notes in this fragrance. It has resinous sweetness. It's a little bit dark. It has incense. There's a, a slight bit of powder from Amber in this fragrance. The quality is out of control. It smells fantastic for the price that you can usually pick this up at. That is more of a nighttime fragrance, which is not a surprise. It's called Pulse of the Night after all. Uh, with this one, do not pay exorbitant prices. I love this fragrance. I'll tell you guys that straight up, but there are some people on eBay trying to sell this for $100, $150. Don't buy it for that price. That's way too much. When this is in stock at discounters, you can pick it up usually in the $50 range. I've seen it as low as like 45, sometimes up around 60, but you want to pay right around 50 bucks for this. Do not pay $100, $150. Don't get suckered in to, uh, I guess, riding the hype train and paying whatever you have to pay. Just wait a little bit and this will be back in stock at discounters. I've seen it go in stock and out of stock two or three times now. Number two though, Nuidisi, Pulse of the Night. Love that fragrance. That's gonna take me to number one. It is a fantastic release. I love this fragrance as well. I've said that a lot, haven't I? I love that fragrance, but I really do enjoy this one. Even though I haven't done a review of it yet, it's this Gentleman Eau de Parfum by Givenchy. It has orris or iris, along with patchouli, vanilla, and tolu balsam as some of the main notes. This one gets compared to Valentino Uomo Intense, which is another great fragrance, and Dior Homme Intense, which I've already featured in this video. It is not the same as either of those fragrances. It does not smell the same as Valentino Uomo Intense. It does not smell the same as Dior Homme Intense, but it does feature uh, a similar iris note. So if you wanted to say this is in the same style or family or vein or however you want to say it, as those two fragrances, the Valentino and the Dior, I'd agree with you. It's sweet, balsamic, and warm, a little bit spicy. The iris here does not come across as powdery or lipsticky or makeup-y as in the Dior or the Valentino. So for a lot of guys, that's gonna make this a more wearable version or a more wearable style of that fragrance. The Tolu Balsam gives it kind of an ambery feel and that melds together perfectly with the vanilla, which is a prominent note in this fragrance. And like I told you guys before, I love vanilla. The fragrance is very versatile. It can pull compliments, it has great performance, and it's not all that expensive at discounters. So there is a lot to love with this fragrance. As of this video, you can get a tester of this fragrance, this size, for about 35 bucks from discounters. And that is an enormous bang for your buck in my opinion, because the quality there, very high. And that's gonna wrap up this top 10. Hopefully this video is shorter. I tried to really just run through everything, but uh, there we go. A shortened up version of my top 10 designer fragrances for winter 2019. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. I apologize the first video was so long, but for those of you who wanted a quicker version, hopefully 
this made it up for you. I'll see you guys tomorrow.